Hello everyone. One midnight, a watchman doing his rounds was surprised to find his master still awake and wandering aimlessly around the garden behind his house. The watchman asked him, "What are you doing up so late, sir?" The sad look on his face, the man replied, "My sleep has disappeared, and I am looking for it." How many of you feel that you have lost not just sleep but also appetite, peace and joy in life? You may have many different reasons why you have lost them. Today's first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel warns us that we could lose even our very life because of sin. When the Lord called Ezekiel to be his prophet, the Jews were held captive in Babylon. about 600 years before Christ In today's text we read a part of what the Lord said to the prophet The Lord compared Ezekiel's work as a prophet to that of a watchman In ancient days the city would have a wall around it to afford better protection from enemy attacks It was the task of a watchman or a guard to position himself high on the wall with a trumpet watch carefully and alert people of the coming danger Often it was a matter of life and death If the watchman failed to do his job and people suffered as a result he would have to pay for his failure with his life The Lord used this as an illustration to describe the role of the prophet as a spiritual watchman of the Israelites It was his task as a prophet to speak out courageously and clearly explain the commands of the lord even if the people did not want to hear the command of the lord to the prophet was to tell the people that because of their wickedness they would surely die at the same time he himself was warned that if he did not correct the wicked and warn them of the consequences of their evil ways their destruction becomes his responsibility the lord said to him If you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death But if you warn the wicked and they try to turn him from his way and he refuses to turn from his way he shall die for his guilt but you shall save yourself Friends the message is plain simple and direct It teaches us a practical lesson for life. Like the prophet each of us has been given the charge of confronting people on their sin. The Lord wants us not only to avoid sin and pursue holiness but also wants us to help others grow and remain faithful. There is no doubt that we all sin and are imperfect. But sin affects all of us both when we sin and when others sin hence every sin needs to be dealt with because it's not merely something that hurts someone else but also puts us on the path to losing sleep appetite peace joy and everlasting life when our sins are pointed out some of us have the courage to change whereas many others enjoy living in sin and do not intend to give it up Therefore the Lord wants us to diligently exhort and warn one another about the dangers of sin. However, of course, it is not easy to go up to others and warn them of the dangers of sin. Some people can get really offended when you try to correct them. Moreover, there are a lot of wicked people in the world. How are we supposed to warn all of these people? The prophet Ezekiel was called to primarily warn the nations of Judah and Israel and then other nations surrounding them. So too, God has not called us to warn every sinner that crosses our path, but rather holds us accountable to be faithful watchmen to those in whose midst he has placed us. And we are not also called to a prophetic ministry like the prophets. A prophet has a unique and special vocation. So also we all have been given special vocations. For instance, as a priest, 
I have the obligation to call on people from all walks of life to repent of their sins even if they do not want to hear it. Our church must speak out boldly concerning issues that are core to our beliefs. One of the main callings of God to his people is the call to be a parent or child or brother or a sister in a family. Therefore, the primary people we are to be concerned about are our family members. We know from our own experience, there are many sins that divide our families and cause rifts in our relationships. The yardstick to measure others and ourselves is the commandments of the Lord. In today's second reading, St. Paul reminds us of those commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. These and all other commandments are summed up in one, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These commandments speak of our obligation to one another. It is a call to warn people in our own families and communities of the dangers of sin and encourage them to turn from their evil ways so that they will live and we will save our own life also. However, we must correct them gently and lovingly. St. Paul says that we owe one another nothing but love and love does no evil to the neighbor. In other words, fraternal corrections is not meant to shame or embarrass or judge the other person, but to express our love for one another. Many of us do not want to confront people about their sin for two reasons. One, we are afraid of losing friends and our relationship. Two, we feel that we have no right to control people's lives or impose our values and beliefs on them. Friends, today we are warned that if we do not warn one another of the dangers of sin and help one another to grow and remain faithful to God, we will die in our sins and the Lord will hold us responsible as well for our failure to warn others of their sins. Amen. God bless you.